Sometimes the thoughts I get in my head make me want to crawl away and hide. Nothing ever turns out the way you imagine it in your head. Or at least very rarely. And in my case, never. I always thought that once you got laid, you had it made, right? Something in me would change once I'd actually done it. And wham! I'd be able to talk to girls, ask them out, no problem. But when that girl came up to me in the hallway to ask me what it felt like to catch an STD, I thought she was... I actually thought she was coming over to talk to me because... because she'd heard about me in that hooker sable and she was impressed or something. Wrong. She was looking at me like I was some kind of a lab experiment or something. The guys think it's great. The girls think it's gross. Ah, uh, they just act that way because they're expected to. I mean, I used to wonder if girls ever imagined what I look like naked. <laughs> what? Haven't you ever thought that if you fantasize about girls dancing around naked in your head most of the time, that maybe at least one might have fantasized about you dancing naked in her head? Never. Well, I did. Now, one day I caught my mother watching one of those talk shows she can't live without, and they had those Chippendale guys on. It was wild. The women were going nuts over those guys. And that's when it hit. Of course girls fantasize about guys. So girls fantasize about guys. Big news. I just think that guys and girls are in two different worlds and there's no way of knowing what theirs is like. And I'm not about to get a sex change to find out. You know what I'm talking about? Of course you don't. You never have any trouble talking to girls at all. But whenever I try to talk to one, a little voice in my head begins to say things. <laughs> Are you really stupid enough to think she's going to be interested in anything you have to say? The shirt you're wearing makes you look like a dork. It's too late to turn around now, she knows you're walking up to her. That's why she's got that I hope he's not going to talk to me look in her eyes. Don't fake a smile, your teeth are yellow. Relax, shoulders are up around your ears. Forgot what I was going to say to her. Get a grip, Rod. You're getting sketchy on me. You worry too much about it. Yeah? Well, I won't have to worry about it anymore, because none of the girls will be caught dead talking to Mr. Diseased. Hey, before you know it, everybody will forget that you were the guy who caught a disease, but they'll still remember you're not a virgin. And neither am I. What? Well, this weekend at Greg's party, you remember what a party is, don't you? Or have you been grounded so long that you've forgotten? Not funny. Anyway, last week at Greg's party, I met this girl. I think her name was Katya. She's a friend of Greg's sister. Anyway, everybody was dancing in the front room and I went to the kitchen to get another beer and I met her in the hallway. She was standing there alone, so hot, and totally drunk. So was I, but not as drunk as her. She was laughing at everything I said. She laughed so hard she fell on the floor. And then I ended up on the floor laughing with her. <laughs> I don't know how long we were on the floor laughing, but when we finally stopped, she looked at me and then she kissed me. Man, that girl was wild. She started jamming her tongue down my throat right from the word go. In like two seconds, we were rolling all over the hallway floor. It was getting so hot, I decided to drag her up to Greg's room. You've been to Greg's place before, haven't you? It's on the second floor of their house. We could barely hear the noise from the party downstairs. God, this catcha babe was so drunk she could barely hear herself think. Never mind the party downstairs. So I just pushed her toward the bed and continued the makeout party. Once I had her on the bed, I knew I could make my move. This was one opportunity I wasn't gonna miss. I mean, she was totaled and raring to go. So I started to take off her top. She started to get all weird or something. So I told her to relax and just kept going. I could tell she was really getting into what I was doing because she really started to squirm. She was pretending she wanted me to stop, which was so hot, but I was too into it, if you know what I mean. Come on, don't you like it? Just relax. I'm not gonna hurt you. There, see? But I'm not gonna let you up until I get another kiss. It was fantastic. I had no idea that getting laid would feel so great. We didn't talk much after we were finished. She just got real quiet, laid there on the bed with her face in the pillow. I think she just wanted to sleep it off. You know, like you said, girls can be so hard to figure out, eh? I mean, after she starts the whole naked thing in the hallway and then goes up to the bedroom with me, she pretends she doesn't want to do it anymore. And she started to say, no, I don't want to a couple of times, but girls just need the right encouragement. 
And I knew she really meant yes, because if she didn't really want to, then she would have said something after we'd done it. But she didn't say a word. She just buried her face in the pillow. Take it from me, Rod. No doesn't always mean no. Girls like to do it as much as we do, only they're not supposed to admit it. So most of the time, they say no because they don't want to look like sluts. So they kind of expect us to be able to know when they say no, they really mean yes. I can't wait until I get a chance to do it again, because all I want to do is bang, boy, bang!